May 12th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 2 Samuel chapters 3 and 4 from the Old Testament. However, the war was prolonged between the house of Saul and the house of David. David was becoming steadily stronger, while the house of Saul was becoming increasingly weaker. Now sons were born to David in Hebron. His firstborn was Ammon, born to Ahinoam, the Jezreelite. His second son was Kiliab, born to Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite. His third son was Absalom, the son of Maacah, daughter of King Talmai of Geshur. His fourth son was Adonijah, the son of Haggath. His fifth son was Shephatiah, the son of Abital. His sixth son was Ithream, born to David's wife Eglah. These sons were all born to David in Hebron. As the war continued between the house of Saul and the house of David, Abner was becoming more influential in the house of Saul. Now Saul had a concubine named Rizpah, daughter of Ea. Ishbosheth said to Abner, Why did you have sexual relations with my father's concubine? These words of Ishbosheth really angered Abner, and he said, Am I the head of a dog that belongs to Judah? This very day I am demonstrating loyalty to the house of Saul, your father, and to his relatives and his friends. I have not betrayed you into the hand of David, yet you have accused me of sinning with this woman today. God will severely judge Abner if I do not do for David exactly what the Lord has promised him, namely, to transfer the kingdom from the house of Saul and to establish the throne of David over Israel and over Judah all the way from Dan to Beersheba. Ishbosheth was unable to answer Abner with even a single word because he was afraid of him. Then Abner sent messengers to David saying, To whom does the land belong? Make an agreement with me and I will do whatever I can to cause all Israel to turn to you. So David said, Good, I will make an agreement with you. I ask only one thing from you. You will not see my face unless you bring Saul's daughter, Michael, when you come to visit me. David sent messengers to Ishbosheth, son of Saul, with this demand. Give me my wife, Michael, whom I acquired, for a hundred Philistine foreskins. So Ishbosheth took her from her husband, Paltiel, son of Laish. Her husband went along behind her, weeping all the way to Bahiram. Finally, Abner said to him, Go back. So he returned home. Abner advised the elders of Israel, Previously you were wanting David to be your king. Act now, for the Lord has said to David, By the hand of my servant David I will save my people Israel from the Philistines and from all their enemies. Then Abner spoke privately with the Benjaminites. Abner also went to Hebron to inform David privately of all that Israel and the entire house of Benjamin had agreed to. When Abner, accompanied by twenty men, came to David in Hebron, David prepared a banquet for Abner and the men who were with him. Abner said to David, Let me leave so that I may go and gather all Israel to my lord, the king, so that they may make an agreement with you. Then you will rule over all that you desire. So David sent Abner away, and he left in peace. Now David's soldiers and Joab were coming back from a raid, bringing a great deal of plunder with them. Abner was no longer with David in Hebron, for David had sent him away, and he had left in peace. When Joab and all the army that was with him arrived, Joab was told, Abner, the son of Ner, came to the king. He sent him away, and he left in peace. So Joab went to the king and said, What have you done? Abner has come to you. Why would you send him away? Now he's gone on his way. You know Abner, the son of Ner. Surely he came here to spy on you and to determine when you leave and when you return and to discover everything that you are doing. Then Joab left David and sent messengers after Abner. They brought him back from the well of Sirah, but David was not aware of it. When Abner returned to Hebron, Joab took him aside at the gate as if to speak privately with him Joab then stabbed him in the abdomen and killed him, avenging the shed blood of his brother Asahel.
When David later heard about this, he said, I and my kingdom are forever innocent before the Lord of the bloodshed of Abner, son of Ner. May his blood whirl over the head of Joab and the entire house of his father. May the males of Joab's house never cease to have someone with a running sore or a skin disease, or one who works at the spindle, or one who falls by the sword, or one who lacks food. So Joab and his brother Abishai killed Abner, because he had killed their brother Asahel in Gibeon during the battle. David instructed Joab and all the people who were with him, Tear your clothes, put on sackcloth, lament before Abner. Now King David followed behind the funeral bier. So they buried Abner in Hebron. The king cried loudly over Abner's grave, and all the people wept too. The king chanted the following lament for Abner. Should Abner have died like a fool? Your hands were not bound and your feet were not put into irons. You fell the way one falls before criminals. All the people wept over him again. Then all the people came and encouraged David to eat food while it was still day. But David took an oath saying, God will punish me severely if I taste bread or anything whatsoever before the sun sets. All the people noticed this and it pleased them. In fact, everything the king did pleased all the people. All the people in all Israel realized on that day that the killing of Abner, son of Ner, was not done at the king's instigation. Now the king said to his servants, Do you not realize that a great leader has fallen this day in Israel? Today I am weak, even though I am anointed as king. These men, the sons of Zeruiah, are too much for me to bear. May the Lord punish appropriately the one who has done this evil thing. When Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, heard that Abner had died in Hebron, he was very disheartened, and all Israel was afraid. Now Saul's son had two men who were in charge of raiding units. One was named Baana, and the other Rechab. They were sons of Rimmon, the Beerothite, who was a Benjaminite. Beeroth is regarded as belonging to Benjamin, for the Beerothites fled to Gittim and have remained there as resident foreigners until the present time. Now Saul's son Jonathan had a son who was crippled in both feet. He was five years old when the news about Saul and Jonathan arrived from Jezreel. His nurse picked him up and fled, but in her haste to get away, he fell and was injured. Mephibosheth was his name. Now the sons of Rimmon, the Beorothite, Rechab, and Baana went at the hottest part of the day to the home of Ishbosheth as he was enjoying his midday rest. They entered the house under the pretense of getting wheat and mortally wounded him in the stomach. Then Rechab and his brother Baana escaped. They had entered the house while Ishbosheth was resting on his bed in his bedroom. They mortally wounded him and then cut off his head. Taking his head, they traveled on the way of the Arabah all that night. They brought the head of Ishbosheth to David in Hebron, saying to the king, Look, the head of Ishbosheth, son of Saul, your enemy who sought your life. The Lord has granted vengeance to my Lord the King this day against Saul and his descendants. David replied to Rechab and his brother Baana, the sons of Rimmon, the Beorothite, As surely as the Lord lives who has delivered my life from all adversity, when someone told me that Saul was dead, even though he thought he was bringing good news, I seized him and killed him in Ziklag. That was the good news I gave to him. Surely when wicked men have killed an innocent man as he slept in his own house, should I not now require his blood from your hands and remove you from the earth? So David issued orders to the soldiers, and they put them to death. Then they cut off their hands and feet and hung them near the pool in Hebron. But they took the head of Ishbosheth and buried it in the tomb of Abner in Hebron. God, we always think of David as this big, strong warrior, man who can handle anything. But if we really look at the verses that you've included in your Bible that are about him, it's constantly about your strength that makes him look that way. And I think we need to be really clear about that, that anytime he gets into any situation, including his, his two wives being taken into captivity or 
uh, people killing people off in his name. Uh, he always turns to you for strength. When they had brought in the head of Ishbosheth into court, he said, Today I am weak, even though I am anointed as king. These men, the sons of Zerura, are just too much for me to bear. May the Lord punish appropriately the one who has done this evil thing. Not only was David constantly turning to you, God, for decisions that he was making, a lot of them, not all of them, and when he didn't have the strength to go on, when things overwhelmed him, he turned to you and, and asked you for strength and asked you to take over in those situations. And I think that's a very, very strong reminder to all of us that we don't have to be strong. We can be weak because you are strong and you allow us to carry on with that strength in our lives. So when things affect us, whether it be relationships or online bullies or uh, financial situations or confusion over some sort of decision, we know you have shown us over and over again in the Bible. We know we can go to you and we can tap into your strength. You have promised us that. You've also promised us your faithfulness as we work through those particular things. And we can see that over and over again in how you interacted with David. David, for the most part, was obedient to you. He looked to you for guidance. He looked to you for strength. And in return, you were faithful to him and blessed his life as well. God, today I just, I pray that we start to understand just what we can tap into with you your strength, your grace, your mercy, your amazing forgiveness. We are not powerful, but you are, and we are your children. In your son's name I pray, amen. <laughs>